uh, reiterating what Monte Cristo said earlier today, mm -hmm. the amount of depth that the Korean rosters have and the fact that SKT yeah. actively use it in M series. We'll need to see between Faker and Easy Hoon, the sixth man for SKT at MSI is Easy Hoon as we jump into pick some bands and the Urgot being taken away from SK Telecom. That's no surprise at all. Right away. Uh, SKT also on red side here. So if Faker wants, he can last pick and counter. Quite a birthday present for the birthday boy as it is Faker's birthday today. Also a nice band there by of Ari by SKT. Energy's most played and most successful champion at the IWCI. Yep. Taking their time. This is a little unexpected. Definitely going through the notions. Coaches with definitely a lot to say in, in this part here. The players are letting the bands go to the voices behind them. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, achievements under Coma's belt. That is the coach for SKT over on the right-hand side of your Very screen. True. This is a guy with multiple international event wins, multiple local LCK or previously OGN victories, yeah. and now looking for another win. I believe SKT has won every single international event that they have attended. And this will be the first game here in 2015, the Mid-Season Invitational. Good focus on Bang there with two bands. Well, a little bit of Urgot to the mid lane if it flexes as well, but Faker gets that LeBlanc ban yeah. as well. So you see the priority of where Besiktas really wants to hit SKT. Yeah, Bang's Kalista is undefeated, so it's not yeah. a big surprise that they're banning that here. I mean, basically SKT is just banning the champions that Besiktas had the most success at that, with the International War Invitational. Thaldrin loves to play Riven. That's why he's hovering this. It is his favorite champion. We're hoping to somehow see it here at MSI. I'm a little bit skeptical of yeah. the Riven, especially against SKT here. You mean first pick blind Riven <laughs> is, is not on your expectations, chat? This isn't this isn't solo queue. <laughs> I thought we were commentating a solo queue game. But with a mix of uh, mix of lane bands and all yeah. of the junglers up. Where do they put their priority? You know, for Besiktas, we know that Energy is one of the weaker players. He struggled, even at IWCI, right. against all of his respective opponents. And it was Thaldrin and, and Nadius, to a certain extent, that helped carry Besiktas throughout the tournament. So seeing the Sejuani lock in as a first pick, yeah. I think that's safe. It's not giving anything up. Thaldrin definitely came up big for them. Looking now over the side of SKT, not too many top lane bans out of anywhere. That means Mari can get what he wants. We also know that if Besiktas is going to win a game here at MSI, it's going to be through team fights. So the first pick of Sejuani Absolutely. is very smart and sound. It is the best team fighting jungler on the current patch and a very good first pick for Besiktas. And currently undefeated in the Besiktas playoffs over at the IWCI 3-0 for Theocles with a 76% kill participation. Those are very impressive stats. He's going to need to keep that up against uh, the best team from the historically strongest region. Yeah, and having Marin on Rumble as well as Wolf on Thresher, just two incredibly powerful picks yeah. for SKT. They have an incredibly wide champion pool. The only question I'm going to have here about SKT's champions is what type of champion is Faker going to play? Is he going to be on an assassin or more of a control mage? Faker actually found a lot of success on Lulu. Interestingly enough, one yep. of the better compositions for SKT has been a bit of a juggernaut, but with a Sivir involved, where they use a lot of mid-game teamfight power to control dragons, which is SKT's main game plan in most games. And those have actually been taken away by Besiktas. Lulu and Sivir locked in on that side. Protection here for Nardius, someone you said was really a big point for Besiktas coming out of the IWCI. Bengi could be looking at that Rek'Sai for a bit of early game pressure here. Would definitely favor Faker in the mid lane if you give him some help. Control that jungle here against Theocles. Bengi's most played champion in the last 14 games has been that Rek'Sai with three. But let's also just add in there, there's a, a number of champions he's played and it is locked in. What I like from SKT, early to mid game power, assuming you've just got better players, better decision making, just accelerate the game and win before 30 minutes. And that's what I think they can do with what they've got so far. Specifically about the Dragon Control as well, it's another reason I think Bengi's best champion is Rek'Sai. They can use that Tremor Sense to control the Dragon better yep. with Vision. Even if they don't have wards placed in certain areas, they can sense and get those wards in safely. Uh, they're, they're picking just a ton of Dragon Fight champions right now for SKT. Interesting here, coming in from Besiktas, a little bit of Shielding and fear from a scary SKT composition here, but also a little bit of go in headstrong as well with a Siveralt if they can hit it right 
and that Glacial Prison coming in from Sej. Looks like they've got themselves both sides of the coin on that one. A great composition to come out against SK. I think if they lock these two picks in, they've got a lot of strength in multiple stages in the game. They've got a lot of tools available to them, as you've said, Riv, with engage and disengage. Right. A little bit more there. <laughs> A little bit more. I almost would have preferred the Cassiopeia because I feel there's a severe lack of damage now on the Besiktas side if this game runs particularly long. But Faker, happy birthday, Faker. It is his birthday and he is playing a Zier right now. This is something that Easy Hoon played in the finals against GE Tigers. Yep. And many people say Easy Hoon's Azir is better than Faker's. Well, Faker's going to have his own show right here with the Azir. He's not playing the Assassination type champion. He is going for the Azir, which has immense damage and tremendous zone control. It fits SKT's overall game plan, and maybe let's Faker show off a bit too. If there's anything that can help Besiktas, mobility from Siva and Lulu, and the range of engage that Sejuani and Na offer you, there are some tools to get onto that Azir, but they really, really cannot afford to let themselves get poked down, let themselves get in a position where the Rumble Azir combo can just decimate their backline. Yeah, I generally like the team fighting team composition of Besiktas if they can keep control of the mid game. But if they fall behind just a little bit because of that lack of damage and because right. they have so much built in for their mobility, SKT will just run over them with the Rumble Azir. Already going to be a tough laning phase here for Besiktas, just in skill in general. Hopefully that does not domino out of control for them. This is going to be our second matchup of the day. We just saw Fnatic versus Team Solo Mid set the bar up higher oh, than yeah. I can really put my hand right now. And now that you have seen the comps, it is time to show the team some love over on social media. Hit up Twitter, send hashtag either BJKWin or hashtag SKTWin to at Sports. We'll tally up your votes as usual shortly once we get on to the rip. The crowd is ready coming in for game two. They're loud, they're rowdy, and we're about to start the game. We we'll have to take a look at how Besiktas handled themselves. They're loading up onto the rift, and Jet, you touched on the fact that Besiktas do not want to get themselves behind. Yeah. Unfortunately for the team, they fell behind often at International Wildcard. They did play from behind relatively well, though, and they bounced back. We rewatched their final against uh, INTZ. Absolutely. And multiple ga times we were going, how did they win this game? How did they win this game? And Besiktas, they found ways to steal Barons. They found ways to stall the game out. Even if they're down to the last Nexus turret, can't count these guys out. They will stay alive. A little bit of Faker BM with his soldier, but he's dancing. It is one thing we have to touch on. Every time we have an international competition like this, players around the world are all very good. The things that separate the great teams from the good teams, or even the great regions from the regions that aren't there yet, uh, is everything that happens before the team fights a lot of times, the setup for the team right. fights, the vision control that set up ganks, what actually puts people in unfavorable positions to begin with. Because if Besiktas can actually enter a team fight with, without any predisposed disadvantages, if they're not getting flanked, if they have the proper vision control, yeah. if they haven't had to burn their summoner spells preemptively Maybe because of something else, then they're actually quite good. And that's the reason they could come back from large gold deficits yeah. against INTZ is because they were finding fights that didn't start with a disadvantage. But that has actually been SKT's forte throughout League of Legends right. is making the fights unfair and then still having the amazing and perfect mechanics. Really hard to find holes in that defense anywhere in the game. And if they do have one, they patch it up immediately and you see him take the lead once again. We'll start this off. It looks like we will get the lane swap to start, and we're gonna get a nice freeze on the lane as well from Nardius. So we'll see what uh, Besiktas can do with the lane swap. Things we always talk about, the experience, the goal, the decision-making about pushing those lanes down, and also what you can do against your opponent's top lane. Amaran is already in lane. Gonna start soaking up as much of that XP as possible, whereas Thaldrin is currently doing the double jungle start with the Ocales. And we'll see who's going to have that greater impact. Yeah, well, this is a little bit strange by Besiktas right now because it doesn't actually look like they're denying Marin in the yeah. status. Instead, they're going for a little bit of Whoa. In the mid lane. Looks like Thakalese and Thaldrin just on the other side, and it's going to be as well. Dumbledoge from the top lane. The hits go in. No, oh, 10 points to Dumbledoge. First blood. Besiktas kills Faker three minutes into the first game of MSI. Faker does get camped when he plays a lot of League of Legends games. I wasn't sure he was expecting four people mid, two and a half Happy minutes Happy birthday! In. But the thing we have to look at is what does that cost Besiktas? Let's keep a look 
at the minion numbers as well as the farm rather as well as how the next few minutes play out remember Besiktas opted into the lane swap and then made that aggressive play giving Faker a birthday present he wasn't <laughs> necessarily expecting they burned both of his summoners too unbelievable right there Faker falls that early on in the game honestly that that is what happens in a lot of these games that Faker plays in the LCK, is teams yeah. will send three or four people for him. He will actually die sometimes, whereas Easy Hoon is a much more reserved player early, so people don't even, A, they don't think to camp Easy Hoon because he's not normally going for 1v1 kills as Faker would be. And Ooh. he also avoids the ganks. And something you also, I think we have to step back and look at, Besiktas playing at the international wildcard. They barely scraped in, into the uh, oh playoffs. Bengi does find Theophilus, but no trouble yet. Um, Besiktas went 3-3 three and three in the group stage, and they only qualified in the fourth seed because of a tiebreaker rule, but then they stepped up their game. It does look they're going for Nardius. Yeah, Bengi and Wolf have the numbers advantage on Nardius. Janna is nowhere near. They can see that now. Teleport has to come in defensively, but that's a teleport burn and a lot of experience tonight. Yep, this is going to be Bang in the bottom lane by himself now. See, that uh, it's going to be a back. We'll see if they can get themselves right into the correct position after this one. Just a quick move to save uh, Nardius. Yeah, just to finish that thought really quickly, a big reason Besiktas improved so much in the playoffs is Theocles improving and making really strong early plays. They're rinsing and repeating, and they're going for Nardius. Oh, he does have the flash. There it is from Bangi. He gets the knock up the spell shield just a little too late and spent. Nardius goes down. Oh, oh, he is able to get a retribution kill for himself on Bangi. With a three-man gank, being able to get that return kill is another thing that has gone great for Besiktas early on in this game. But with all of that, with the gank on Faker, with the kill back on the turret dive, it's a 1 to 200 gold advantage for Besiktas. They have invested so much in those kills early on. Thaldren's Gnar is next to non-impact. He's 8 CS to 30 on Marin. Level 3 to level 5. Marin's going to have access to his equalizer. He may even be able to solo Dumble Doge. Ooh, there's a lot of minions there. Dumble Doge taking a bit too much damage. Good exhaust, but it may have just told him he can go even harder since the exhaust wore off, and he's home free. Yeah, it's not over yet. We do see Theocles and energy in trouble. Bengi's looking for the knockup. He finds Ooh. it. He's going to get the Wrath down. They turn to Theocles, and that's two more kills for SKT. Revenge for SKT after yeah. that start. This is the cost of the Sheikta sending four people mid to kill Faker on his birthday, two minutes, 30 <laughs> seconds into the game. The dive, well, the kill in the top lane was because Dumbledore was level two since he did roam mid lane, since he was trying to control the vision early on. Everything else, the mid lane energy burned his flash for the kill in the first place, so it wasn't up on the return kill from Bengi. And SKT now in control. Six minutes in, things already getting rough and rowdy, gentlemen. Six kills on the board. We're going to stick to one a minute so far. A very nice lantern there for Wolf. Something SKT does very well. This Thresh pick allows Bengi to harass all the time like that and get in the in enemy's jungle. Yeah, it does manage to avoid the threat and get out clean. Keep an eye on Thuljan. Still level four to level six. Marin's going in. He wants Nardius. He is just laying down the fire anywhere, knowing Nardius half health really won't be able to go back into lane. He is completely pushing him off of that. And Energy looks to be using that little bit of help he got early very nicely. Yeah, keeping Faker back oh. in the lane right here. I do have to say, though, Marin is going to be a problem. <laughs> I think he already scary. is one. Already has those home guards. The, it's because the lane swap wasn't that real. They had a Sivir 1v1 against Termillion in the game. It allowed him to farm, get the experience of gold. Then he also was the beneficiary uh, of the kill in the three-man dive, yeah. plus the solo kill. Early home guards. He's going to keep his presence up this entire time. And oh, a lot of damage. Marin is in so much trouble. Does manage to flash the gank. Yeah. But SKT are replying to the Rome squad of Besiktas in kind and more effectively. Now with that help back to the top lane, things get a little easy for Nardius. He could not stay up there by himself against Marin right now. As we were saying, home guard's already there for him. And we can see SKT with a little bit more knowledge around Dragon. They want to start getting themselves a little bit more ahead in the game. Could see another... Now I was going to say invade from Faker, but it looks like they are just focused on the objective. Yeah, definitely something SK2 do incredibly well is Dragon Control. Very early, and there's no way Absolutely. you win a challenge, especially considering the strength that SKT have at the moment. But I just want to hit on Marin's Gnar really quickly. Again, he's really strong, really powerful at the moment. 2-0 in their last two performances with a 9 KDA. 
This is a champion that he's super comfortable on, and I don't see how anyone from Besiktas is going to handle him, because yes, they have some survival tools in Lulu and Janna, but a good equalizer can negate a lot of that power. They did not have to move Marn out of that top lane for the Dragon. They had to do nothing different. Things really didn't going even to favor as Teleport wasn't even no, available. not at all. Yeah, the teleport advantage isn't actually a factor right here because Mashik does is just behind the curve of this game right now. Right. They're still using Nardius and Double Doge in that top lane, yet it's not denying Marn in the slightest. And they're still getting farm in other facets of the game. That is SKT, which is just increasing this gold advantage more and more. Mm -hmm. Faker still, even in CS after that death, after a second time being pushed out of lane, we saw from Energy, so keeping it very strong in the middle for SKT as per usual. Oh, Marin, that's the overheat. Up, and we do see Exhaust comes out as well, but Wolf is around. Death Sentence does connect. Nardis in a little bit of trouble as the Equalizer goes down to split them up. The Lantern pulls Wolf in. Oh, they go right for Dumbledoge. He's going to go down. Doesn't have anything to use for it anyways in a great counter hit there by SKT. I really like the way SKT is actually playing around Marin when necessary. Once the dragon was taken off the map, the objectives change and they're going to help out their carry rumble. Faker with the blue buff, energy not with the blue, and that means Faker's gonna be spitting out soldiers everywhere. The Glitter Lance hopefully giving him Whoop. the space he needs. Shifting Sands will put Faker closer, but he doesn't have that much mana. Energy trying to get away. Energy throws down his Ignite. Faker throws down the cleanse. Oh! oh it's gonna be Faker coming up in the 1v1. So close! At least Energy, Energy tried. It's not At least he tried to try and take down Faker. This is this is Bashikta's losing all over the map right here. Turret dive attempt from oh, Bang. Bang. Woo! Played a little close to the chest right there. <laughs> SKT playing a little eager here. It feels like chasing down the kills, but they are coming away with it. Props to Energy for the attempt. He did make that joking uh, room page post. 15 percent time. <laughs> Spend less dead, we'll see if it works out. I checked in champ select, he is running a real rune page. 15% <laughs> time dead rune reduction was but a joke for uh, energy. Good branding, good sense of humor at the very least. Keeping up in CS thanks to that very early gank and the fact that Faker did give up first blood. But just after the 10 minute mark, Besiktas find themselves 2,000 gold down. And SKT's power with Lucian, Rexly, Rumble is just going to get even more uh, dominant in the next 10 to 12 minutes. And we need to see how Besiktas handle themselves, whether or not they can hold on to their alpha turrets. Yeah, and now that Marin has his teleport up, it just becomes even more threatening. It's now a teleport discrepancy, and this is something that SKT is going to use to their advantage. When Besiktas had theirs, they had their teleporter in the bottom lane. Yeah. No good teleport opportunities. Now the lanes have kind of flipped back to standard, but Marin is head and shoulders above Thaldrin. If he doesn't solo kill him, he's going to use his teleport to get, go elsewhere and create a pretty big play. Another thing that's head and shoulders above right now is SKT's wards around the map here. Kind of nonchalantly walking into the dark brush, but after that, they have the vision of energy coming in. Ooh. Everybody else there to help the fight. A little bit of a disengage there coming out of Dumble Doge as well, but he doesn't even have that ultimate yet to help out. Yeah, Faker's Morel and Omicron there on his ear comes in and does some massive damage, completely pulling Theocles out of that fight, which then just creates all the more safety for Bengi and Wolf to be that roaming ward squad that can now show up three people in each lane. Wolf has hardly been a support this game. He's been a ganker. That's Absolutely. Working. Helping Bengi out, following him around. Allowing for the deep wards in an instant dark passage, passage exit from the jungle. And they have all the vision they need. Marin again, whether it's Nardius oh. or Thaldrin in the top lane, he's just throwing down the equalizer and pushing out his opponent. 40 CS difference and two levels. <laughs> Marin can have his way with anybody on this map. And Bengi now may be setting up for energy in this mid lane. Ooh. A lot of pain going on to energy here. Bengi's floating down. I'm interested to see what Bang and Wolf also do in this situation. They're obviously going to start crushing down, put the stranglehold here onto the bottom lane, but it looks like they actually pull off it. They didn't like the setup, and SKT stops that one for now, but it did not look like oh. Wolf and Bang stopped. There goes the Sivir. They're going in for the fight. That Glacial Prison does lock him up, but as soon as it does, Bengi arrives yeah. for the counter gank. Besiktas not going over eager. Nadia is no heal and not enough hit points. A little bit of miscommunication there by SKT escaping that gank. Mm. Bang used his dash over top of Wolf's Lantern, but they still had full summoners up so they could burn all their escape summoners, still escape the gank, and now they're going to be prepping the wards for Dragon number two. Oh, SKT, 13 minutes on the clock, starting to pitch the vision net yep. in Besiktas' jungle. We've seen Bengi counter jungling 
significantly this game over and over. And Wolf, as you said, the ganking partner working out. Yeah. Death Sentence just goes wide, but the Lantern and the power of Rek'Sai in the early game working in their favor. Now, Marin, I think he's going to destroy Thaldrin. Oh, wow. Hex Drinker popped with two spells for Marin's Rumble up there. Still holds Teleport, but now the advantage has been equalized. Uh, Thaldrin technically has Teleport and would be able to TP into a fight, but he, right. he has no... Comparing the power of the Rumble and the Gnar uh, isn't really close in any sense of the word. Popped Hex Drinker and more Magic Resist versus a Rumble who's halfway to level 11 right there on his experience bar. Yeah. SKT in great position for this next Dragon. Yeah, and this is something that we sort of expected from Besiktas. The fact that the laning phase was going to be very difficult for them, knowing the strength of SKT's individual players and their team play. But you have to step back and give some props to Besiktas. They did initiate the lane swap. Mm -hmm. They did go for that early gank. And they are trying to make things happen. They're just unfortunately missing out on one or two of those uh, plays, not having the hit points for the fight, not initiating 100% together at times. But props to Besiktas for trying. They're not just laying down. That's, def out. that's definitely one thumbs up I saw from them at the beginning of the game. Even energy trying to go one-on-one -on -one versus Faker once again. Those chances, those opportunities, a lot of teams fall back and wait for their team to try and go for it. But at the same time, SKT is displaying what it means to be a world-class team. When your mid laner gets four-man ganked at the start of the game, you don't just let that happen. You take an advantage off of that. And after that four-man gank, it gave Marn an edge in that top lane, yep. which he has continually extended throughout this game. And now SKT is controlling the Oh, drink. Energy's in so much trouble for to use the wild growth, a bunch of summoners have been blown. Here's the teleport from Thuldren. He's already in Meganar. The oh. prison catches Wolf and Beggy. It's another kill to Besiktas, but the dragon is now taking down the Turkish squad. They dove right into Theocles, and now they're going to serve him up. Beggy over the wall. Marin piercing the heavens with that equalizer. Now on to Thaldrin. It's going to be Dumbledore on one side, but now those guys are split. And I don't know if they really want this. The I think I can situation actually falls on Nardius, and he cannot. He definitely cannot as he gets taken out by Bengi and Marin. We did see SKT securing the dragon in and amongst all of that. Three kills to their name and most likely a tower if they stick around. A fantastic team fight for SKT. They accelerate to a 6,000 gold lead at 15 minutes. Bengi and Marin yeah. are a killing squad right now. Eight of the nine kills for SKT on those guys, and they ran around the back of the dragon pit that time, while the rest of SKT was pretty much just taking the dragon and crushed that team fight. Six and a half thousand gold now, guys, plus the two dragons, SKT. Looking sharp. Yeah. And it's such an easy going game for Bang. He was sitting on some 2200 gold for a while. It just shows you SKT's in no rush to go back, try and force more. They're getting everything they want here by letting kind of BJK play the game they want. Yeah, Bang had actually set some uh, slightly different itemization. I think they went to Theocles. Yeah, he had to use Smite for it, so they yep. could not pass the blue buff over to Energy since SKT harassed him. And I just want to touch on something, Jet, that you mentioned earlier in the game how individually. The gap continues to shrink, region to region. Mechanically, these players are okay. Looking at the energy versus Faker 1v1 as an example. But then you contrast Faker's positioning around the dragon fight with energies and the way SKT pushed into the objective and played around. And that is exactly what you know you were alluding to there, uh, Jets, as the game yeah. was building up. So much of this is in the setup and where players get their farm. The awareness of SKT to know exactly what to do in these lane swaps and punish Besiktas for committing to certain ganks has been very strong. And now they just have this monumental gold lead. But they're testing their luck here. Well, hopefully the monumental fan base of that 47% vote from Besiktas pushes them through here. A little bit of that is what they need. Faker with a nice Emperor's Divide, but it put himself on the wrong side. The Achilles could have gone down, but he gets the wild growth, and I think they're going to continue. Marin comes in with a teleport. And that equalizer decimated Besiktas. There's three members down already, and Bang and Marin looking for more. Dumble Doge is going to get away from the culling, but at what cost? The rest of SKT sticking around to put pressure in the mid lane. Three down, the fourth out of position. Yeah. Bang is going to try and chase him down, keep him occupied. SKT. Just protect him comes at that point. Everyone wanted to kill him. Dumble Doge. He was trying not to move so that Tremor Sense wouldn't see him. Yep. SKT not long better. for that world. Marin actually being in that fight. Teleport is down. My mistake on that one. So SKT was already in position to make things happen and still put the pressure most likely on that mid lane and take down the second tier turret that Thaldrin is trying to guard. 
32,000 now to 23,000 just about for Besiktas. And the Baron is going to be coming up quite soon. I'm sure SKT will put the pressure on that as well. Yeah, and if you step back and look at the game, SKT are not playing safe and controlled. This invade is quite risky for a Raptor camp. Oh yeah, they're playing with the seven or 8,000 gold lead, knowing they're stronger and almost trying to bait Besiktas into fights because they look like good fights to take. At that point, they had a good Sejuani up to start. Baker came in with the flank. The Emperor's Divide actually uses a nice defense to make sure Bashik just couldn't chase through after he knocked the Ocleys back. Ooh. And then you can tell it's just a difference of priorities. Bashik just really just wanted to kill Faker again <laughs> near the end of that fight. <laughs> and they couldn't. Everybody ended up dying. And SKT again in the jungle. Poor Double Doge. Oh! oh! <laughs> yeah. He wins. They, they can't snipe him this time. He gets out alive on that one. And it, as you saw in that replay, anybody hit by it. one person, no matter who it is, is just getting zeroed out immediately. Everybody has items to kill someone as quick as possible on SKT, right? Yeah, but what a what a big signal on the state of the game. Monsoon just to save the support's life. Yeah. The Glacial Prison just to keep Thaldron up, who again is still, you know, a level down 50 CS. Marin's got a death cap already. Death cap rumble is uh -oh, not something Bengi. a lot of people... Oh. A lot not of people particularly like. We'll, we'll let that one slide because Bengi's been doing it and he didn't have the support of Wolf this time around. Talking about the hat of magic on Marin's Rumble right there. Honestly, Rumble has very good AP ratios and is he, if he's never getting aggressed on, he does have the flat magic penetration. That's the way you shred a team with Equalizer as much as possible. That's one of these things you only do with an 8,000 gold lead, but is also not bad to do with an 8,000 gold lead. That's what I was alluding to. I know... The Death Cap first rumble has enraged many a European <laughs> top laner. But 602, and let's be frank, not the largest amount of damage on the Besiktas team composition. You go back to the picks and bands, there was the hover of Cassio plus Lulu. Lulu top with this scenario, less CS, less levels, would have offered more than a NAR top had they gone that route. But that is, of course, hindsight and not the state of the current game we're busy playing. Nope. See the Baron attempt now coming from SKT, or rather, Baron focus. We saw Wolf's pink ward moved up towards the top side now, so the priority is starting to shift here for SKT as their wards are already far enough forward to make this a quite an easy Baron. Wow, yeah. Baron's only been alive They also have seconds. the Tremor Sense and the wards yeah. to see where Bashik just tries to come in from, so I feel like they're using this to try and bait Besiktas into a into a choke and then maybe right. have Marin teleport him behind. They have a very nice ward behind this fight for Marin to TP in on, and then they already catch energy. Oh, oh it no. does look like Besiktas want to re-engage. Bengi's gone low. The Emperor's Divide already used, but there's the Equalizer, oh. and it destroys Besiktas. Throwing those Sand Soldiers forward. Marin is overheating, but he's got the Flame Spitter ticking. Two, three more kills for SKT. That's now 10,000 gold in the lead, and anything they want, they can have. SKT didn't even need the ward to teleport in on Mar and walk through the mid lane in order to pull that one off. Now 16 kills to four, 10,000 gold. Here comes Rek'Sai, this is Baron. It's great getting those home guards and using that scrap shield to get yourself out in the lane. We see Mar do it all the time. We heard the analyst desk talk about it and it has been used to great effect this game. Those home guards came out early and have helped Marn get to that 6-0-4, along with Bengi's help, 6-2-8. and eight. And the second time in the last five minutes that energy has been the one that has been caught out of position. Yeah. Not really respecting the lack of vision or the engaged power that SKT had as the Baron was secured and the third dragon. SKT can just start sieging any lane they want to push that in him. Yep. Yeah, and with this Baron buff, I don't expect it to take that long. Taking another look at this fight, though, they really blew energy around. But honestly, Theocles, good Sejuani ultimate. Nice bit of boomerang there by Nardis to get Bengi at least low. But at this point, in a choke point against Rumble and Azir, not even oh. a great equalizer. If the equalizer were to hit there, it would have been Pentakill, basically, right off the bat. But Marn, as well as Faker, get to use all the damage over the wall. And there's not much to analyze left when you're down 11,000 gold for these two fights. Well, we are looking for the Pentakill or the Baron Steel. That's right. That's how we get that bonus gift. Trigger the mystery gift bonus in the store. If a player gets a Pentakill, or a Baron Steel, you're going to be able to and get if, the chance to gift someone, to double the chance, a legendary in esports skin. If anybody could do it, Faker with Hourglass Morello and nearly Death Cap, or Marin with Death Cap 
haunting guys. One of these two could. Here's the thing. There's so much damage on SKT right now that someone's going to take it by mistake. <laughs> I'm a believer, Jets. Look at that. That's why, build, that's why he built Death Cap on Rumble there. Like two seconds of the equalizer on energy, and it takes him to 30%. Now the split becomes real for Bashikdas. Can they control this? It's been a tough game as SKT put their foot down hard. Seeing that Bashikdas came out firing as well. First blood to the mid lane with four. SKT answered immediately. Oh, definitely a tough game straight out the gate for the wild card region winners. Remember, they are representing the seven regions that took part in that tournament. Six of their opponents fell. And all six of them, including Lex of Oceania, Brazil, for example, keeping their eyes on. But look at this, SKT, they've cracked open the base. They're on this mid lane inhibitor. And Besiktas, they can't even start a fight. They need a Glacial Prison from Theocles, oh, but their oh, energy's man. caught out and he's down. Little too close for comfort and definitely an inhibitor going down here. SKT is actually running by it right now with focus on the kills for a closeout of the game. That possibility is very much in reach as they now head for the top side. SKT still has a little bit of Baron left. I feel like they're going to take these two inhibitors unless they find a fight recall. Well, at the moment, Besiktas have got no tools left to them. Lulu is down. Glacial Prison is out. SKT still hanging about. Death Sentence goes wide and finally back off as the Baron ticks out. The base is now cracked. And SKT setting themselves up to close the game out. The laning phase, a little exciting, a little uh, over-eager for SKT, but a lot cleaner the last six or seven minutes. Right. Clear baiting around objectives and just strategic play from the number one team from LCK. Really Ryan had that big advantage at the top lane. Oh, yeah. Could then use that for the rest of it. We do have to talk about Bashik just in their road here as well, though, because for those of you who didn't watch the International Wildcard Invitational, seven regions, Bashik just actually didn't have the easiest time in that tournament. They oh. were three and three in the group stage there. They moved on to the semifinals based on a tiebreaker advantage they held over the Australian team, Chiefs. And then they were able to make that run through the playoffs once they were the yep. number four seed from the group stage there to become the champions and represent the international wildcard at MSI right here. They're trying to pull off a miracle in this tournament. Doesn't look like it's going to be this game against SKT. Yeah, the pressure is on. If they were nervous about the fans last time a little bit, they got to be nervous about against this lead of SKT. That last outer tier turret goes down, and they now have their eyes only set on the base. He emperor divides him off the wall. He can't get through the gate. Faker, Faker, playmaker coming up big. And there's a little bit of personal pride on that one after how well Easy Hoon yeah. handled Azir in the LCK finals. SKT decides to peel into the base. There's the equalizer down. SKT setting his sights on the Nexus towers. What can Besiktas do to stay alive? The equalizer completely zoning Besiktas off any protection of their Nexus turrets. The health bars are falling just as fast for them, and they are putting up one hell of a final fight, trying to get Thaldrin down now. Bang is going to make that final shot. Actually, it's Fakers. They focus on the Nexus, and SKT will take game two over Besiktas at the midseason. 26 minutes, 25 seconds, SKT gets their first win. Not a surprise here against Besiktas. The only surprising thing was Faker probably giving up first blood in this match.